Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain, and welcome back. Now today I wanted to talk about something that's maybe a little different from stuff that I've talked about before. Um, and that's, that's uh, we've had Darren Brown put out on Netflix his new uh, show, The Push. Um, which kind of follows on from some of the stuff that I've talked about in regards to awareness, in regards to manipulation recently in a string of videos around being manipulated in certain ways, gaslighting, uh, various other bits and pieces around that. Um, dealing with manipulative people and so as a result after it was recommended that I watch it by a friend thank you very much for watching uh, and also thank you very much for recommending it to me then it was a case of um, taking a look at it and throughout the whole thing I was like yeah I've already talked about this stuff in my videos so I may as well use his show as a way of, of breaking it down some more and also highlighting it if you haven't watched it as said it's on Netflix it, go and take a look go and, and have a watch it's about an hour and something minutes long um, but it's it's interesting um, and it's it's kind of fun so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down through the the um, the, the show overall in terms of the things that are shown off not so much necessarily what happens but obviously I will be referring to what happens as a result so if you want to watch it first and not have me start talking about it and, and analyzing it and breaking it down beforehand and go take a look at it on Netflix and uh, and then come back. I'll let you go to go do that now. And now let's get into it. So to begin with, at the very beginning of, of the, the whole thing, Darren Brown comes out, he starts talking about how the whole um, thing that he's looking at in this, this show is social compliance, which, again, through either peer pressure or social influence or whatever else in very different various different ways, um, people can be manipulated by it, and it can. And he, he highlights how this is how people get drawn into ideologies, and how you're basically kind of dancing to someone else's song, and uh, and that's the kind of issues with with the world today, where lots of people aren't aware, and lots of people are very compliant, and so they will go along with this sort of thing. Uh, without a second thought and to highlight this straight away he has one of the actors um, from the later experiment um, convince an individual who's just working in a cafe to um, essentially steal someone's baby and the thing that, that he highlights here is that the actor is posing as a police officer and due to the sudden stressful situation and the, the position of authority that the individual giving the instructions is in, um, there's that status difference. He starts asking for, for, for smaller things first, call me back on this other phone, go and do this, go and do that, and then he escalates. And he escalates it quickly. You know, it's it's not like the rest of the show, but then again, the, what he's asked to do, i.e. take a pram and leave the, the cafe with it, is a relatively smaller request overall than uh, the killing of someone, which is something that uh, happens in their main experiment. But again, it's that response to authority, that that kind of questioning around it or lack thereof, the that stood out. The lack of awareness around the situation, um, where if something was was going on, there are various different things in place that should be done, uh, various different practices that should follow, and that lack of knowledge, either through lack of training by his his manager or whoever was running the place uh, in regards to the cafe, or in regards to his just general awareness of, of the law and the situation that he was suddenly being put in, and all that kind of thing, um, that allowed for him to be taken, the, the, the cafe um, employee to be taken advantage of to essentially steal someone's child uh, with no proof and no evidence of any sort to, to stand out. Like um, when I was working for um, various stores or for, for various places and uh, I had to talk to the police, uh, more often than not they'd come in and they would ask questions and that would be it. Anything else would be in the realm of other, either security staff or the police themselves. They wouldn't ask you necessarily to go and act entirely on out of the blue, you know, especially not without coming in to to direct you in kind of personally from at least my experience. And they're not supposed to get you to do it. That's why they are the police. 
so again though that lack of awareness around the situation the lack of of um, paying attention to what was going on and due to the stress and due to the the sudden imposition of what was going on the guy didn't even realize that the child in the pram wasn't even real which again lack of awareness lack of, of uh, precision and care in the situation and it's easy for people to put you into a stress state as I've talked about in other videos in regards to gaslighting and stuff, it's easy for people to put you into a stress state that then you you uh, can be taken advantage of because you're not thinking clearly. Your, your mind is clouded. It's filled with all of this different noise going back and forth on different topics, on everything that's going on. And because you're off balance and you're kept off balance, it means that someone else can just kind of try and prop you up with their own stuff. Be, be that their own ideas, their own wants, their own ideology, whatever it happens to be, they keep you off balance and they offer you the crutch that is whatever it is they want you to do. Um, in which case, though, then we, we jump forward into the experiment. And the first thing that kind of um, that they highlight is that when the individual that we follow, a chap called Chris, um, through the whole experiment throughout the majority of, of the show, um, the first thing that happens is that he starts, after he's been isolated, after he's had his phone taken away, after his, his, the chap that turned up with him has left him there, and all that kind of thing, um, the first thing that happens is what I believe I referred to as scaling up, where they'll ask a small thing first and then scale up, or they'll ask a big thing and then scale down so that it's either kind of a, a frog in... Uh, a water in you know, being dropped into hot water will jump away. A frog put in water and then warmed up will boil, you know. Or it's a case of, oh, well, this is way too outrageous. But now that that's outrageous, this thing that I'm asking seems reasonable, and so you'll go along with it. There's that difference in proportion, and they show that off. And he describes it. Darren Brown describes it as the foot in the door technique. Um, it's probably got several different names, but you've got that that scaling between asking for one thing and then building up, or, or at times shifting it around so it's the other way around. So one seems really outrageous, and then it, it scales it down. And you have that on and off throughout the majority of the show. After that, you know, various different ways of of tackling him and gaining uh, this individual's compliance and making him subservient, putting him into a different situation. But then he goes into um, we, we cut away and we go into how these people that go through this test, through this experiment, were selected. And this is, I got a little little issue with this here because it's, it's not super scientific to me. But then again, this is a TV show, it's there for entertainment and to highlight this as well. It is a learning experience to watch this and see it highlighted. Um, but again, um, the, the way that they did it was that they had a various collection of people that all applied. They all went through these various tests, and then in the end they got them to this bell test, whereby you had three um, confederates, or in this case actors, who were sat there, and every time a bell rang they would stand up or sit down. Then, as more people got added... They would, you know, they would learn from the people who were already there. They wouldn't ask questions. They would barely talk, and they would stand up and sit down in unison with those other people. They would look for that pattern from others, and anyone that wasn't um, complying with the pattern because they were either ignoring what was going on, didn't care, didn't care to ask, or whatever else, and so they just sat there and got on with filling out the paperwork and stuff that they'd been given. It was a case of uh, those individuals were then removed. Part of me is like, well, that instantly makes this a not particularly representative study because you're only pulling in people with a certain level of compliance. So you already know they're compliant before you even put them into the, you know, it, it's it's like making sure, knowing whether or not the um, the rats have been conditioned in a certain way before you put them into the maze. You know, it's it's not necessarily as representative as it could have been if the main experiment had been run with a right, wider variety of people. But again, it was a big experiment. They had a lot of stuff to do. It was very expensive from the looks of things. So I'm not all that surprised the the it's been slimmed down. And as said, it's TV. It might be educational in some element, but it's also sensationalist and, and uh, for entertainment purposes. So there's that. But by the end, you had this entire group of people who were standing up and sitting down uh, when a bell was rung, regardless of the fact that there were no actors, no confederates, no one else that was there. It was literally just a case of these people standing up and sitting down 
because they thought they should. And this is this is the the thing. A lot of people take cues from those around them. This is how social rules get developed. This is how we learn about um, social interaction, and so on and so on. You know, you you join a new work uh, a new workplace and they're all doing something in a certain way, chances are that's the way you will learn to do it and you won't necessarily ask why. Or if you do ask why, you will be more accepting of just an answer given because you have nothing to judge it against. This is where the problems stem though in regards to this compliance test. And it's what hi what it, this, this test highlights as well is that sometimes we do it, we don't really know why, we just follow this flow because it makes sense to us, because it, it seems sounds reasonable, because everyone else is just doing it. And we don't question and we're not aware. If you were willing to question, then you would ask the others why they're doing it and go, oh, well, mm. but that one person asking potentially then breaks the whole pattern for everybody. Well, why are we standing up and down when the bell rings? Oh, I don't know, the other people were doing it. All right. Well, do they have a reason? No. All right then. Then I'm going to stay sat down because I'm sitting down to fill out paperwork. In which case, then the next person takes the cue from you that you're a stronger individual, stronger personality. You're going to stay sat down. That person then sits down because they realise that there's no reason for them to stand up, and potentially then that cascades and instantly everything's ruined. That was one of the reasons why, when there was an individual who did just sit down, ignored what everyone else was doing. They removed them. Why? Because that person by themselves could have broken the pattern because that's another influence that could affect the others that were there who were already complying. It could break the pattern. In which case, though, again, you can either be incredibly uncaring, low in agreeableness and, and completely remove yourself from what other people do, which, to be fair, can be a subtle art. You know, making sure that you can still interact but also not care enough so you can move past stuff. Or, at the same time, you've got the the more useful, I feel, um, being aware and questioning things. So if you're aware, well, you know that there's this bell, ri bell ringing and these people are standing up and down, but then there begs a question. And then the point is, you ask the question. Unlike the individual that you first see in, in the show enter the room where the bell's being rung, and he, to begin with, seems really confused. He stands there and then he they, they all sit down when the bell rings. He seems confused but sits down anyway and then they get up again and so does he. And they've not been told anything. And so those people that were there before don't know any more than they do. And this is something that the also get highlights kind of the the people that come first being the leader kind of thing. You know, if you are a... a person who has joined a business I can almost guarantee that there is one manager somewhere if not a whole gang of managers who aren't really any good at their job and they're probably not all that uh, successful in what they try to do but at the same time they were there first they were best of the bad bunch and so they have continued to progress because they're all that's there that has hit some kind of time period and they will probably manipulate you or at least they will try because they've got no other option but again, it's those people, those people who come first that, pe that often others will look to, to form a pattern. And this is where in all, all kinds of walks of life, um, it needs to be tackled and managed, especially in things like societies, organisations, clubs, game communities. You know, those people that come first need to be handled in a way that then they set the pattern of behaviour for going for moving forward. And so now you do have a lot of games that are keeping track of that more with community management and for and, and kind of very open um, kind of means of communication. But at the same time, you've got a lot of others that just let it freewheel. And that's where you get a lot of toxicity building up. But anyway, let's move on. So moving on, then uh, is hi the the issue of status is highlighted in the episode, and this is something that I've not touched on all that much um, before. Authority, I've kind of touched on before, but status by itself, I've not. So maybe I'll do another one on that. I've talked about um, status in regards to other things, but not in regards to manipulation. Um, I've kind of touched on it by saying, oh, your manager, or oh, this person that's further up the chain, or whatever else, that will leverage things against you. But that's just because they tend to be the ones that have more to gain from manipulating you, uh, not necessarily otherwise. And so, you know, I've not really touched on status so much. Although the interesting thing was, 
not only heard was it a black tie affair and then the individual Chris that showed up wasn't wearing any kind of black tie esque uh, get up he was just in like a, a collared shirt and you know suit trousers I think um, in which case he was already perceiving himself to be a lower status but then also you had celebrities on screen uh, delivering messages about push anything it takes and that's a kind of subliminal-ish kind of edge of, of uh, reinforcement because we're not um, we're not consciously aware of a lot of the stuff that we pick up in our environment like that, those moments where you feel like you're being watched may very well be that you are your body's picked something up uh, that you've not been able to perceive kind of cognitively and so as much as we could hear the messages again and again and again very loud and obviously because and to add drama and stuff because it was being channeled through an audio mixer um in in the situation that the he was in he may not have cognitively been aware of those voices in the background but his body sure was his brain was picking up all of those things continually throughout the entire place reminding him that high status people these celebrities that he was more than aware of who they were i would imagine because almost all of them were household names you know david tennant stephen fry martin freeman um he's he's having these high status individuals who are very well known who who are very high up in in any kind of hierarchy that you look at when it comes to commentary when it comes to entertainment when it comes to uh, money and power those people are influencers and so he is literally there being told again and again and again to push anything it takes push anything it takes by these high status individuals and then you've got the rest of the community there that are all dressed in in a way that makes him less so and in regards to the way that people dress i've talked about kind of embodied cognition and things like that before but one of the things that stands out to me um, about this is kind of the opposite way around and it comes down to that caring and, and awareness thing again so you know when it comes to those um, those celebs and and their message again if you're aware or if you're you're kind of um, able to just ignore it or take it in context and force yourself to take it in context um, then th that reinforcement isn't going to be as effective against you um, in regards to the status thing though example from my life when I was doing my coaching training I would always turn up to the, the, the accelerator days the big lecture days where we would go full day of lectures as it were um, and I would be in a shirt I'd be in, in kind of cargo trousers and my army boots because that's kind of what I always wear and I'd maybe have a hoodie or a leather jacket or something else as well why? Everyone else was wearing suits and, and dresses and things like that and, and all the rest of it. But why why was I wearing this? Well, more particularly, um, I was one of the only young men there. Everyone else was, for the most part, older or seemed to be some kind of university student that had finished their studies and thought that this would be a great idea to, to kind of move forward because they wanted to help people but they didn't know how and this was a way that they could balance something out between what they wanted to do and how they wanted to do it. Um, but more to the point, I got questioned about it a few times and I was just like, well, look, I'm here to learn. I'm not here to impress you. I'm not here to do anything else. I need, I'm here to learn. How do I best learn when I'm comfortable? So what am I going to wear? I'm going to wear something comfy. You know, it wasn't rocket science. And it just took a little bit of awareness and knowledge of myself to allow me then to to uh, quite happily ignore any comments or any bullshit that people were, were either throwing at me, questioning me on, or thinking to themselves, because quite frankly, I had my reasons for it, and my reasons were more than sound, considering the amount that I had paid for the qualifications as they were. And so, um, what it comes down to is that status thing, especially in regards to uh, perceived status and stuff like that, simply put, remind yourself that everyone's human, everyone's mortal, they're all going to die, no one's better than you, no one's worse than you, if they are objectively better than you, i.e. you have a skill and they have a skill and they succeeded it more than you do, then they're a person to learn from, sure, they're a person maybe to listen to in regards to that particular topic, 
fine. But they're not someone to take on every bit of information they give you or do every single thing that they tell you to do. It all comes down to proportionality almost. You know, what proportion of my control over me am I willing to give someone else based on the fact that they're wearing a tie and I'm in a graphic tee with Cthulhu on the front? You know, it's it's that um, awareness and that, that level of control of yourself that you need to pay attention to rather than everything else. Um, in which case, though, then you've got this this uh, other very high status individual whose status is reinforced again and again and again um, almost to like like again those people are involved in it they're they're it's their life they've got no reason to be suspicious everything seems to be running normally and so they've got no reason to question how often this guy is kind of talked up um, and it is done in a in a very well acted way as well. I would point out. So there's there's none of that. But there would be parts of me that would be like either this guy's a sycophant, like a real sycophant, has a crush on this guy, or this seems to be a bit much. Could have said it once or twice. I, I, being me, I'm not super high on agreeability. Even though I'm quite empathic, my my level of agreeableness um, is as far as I'm aware. The last few times I've taken tests that indicate that kind of thing not super high. So uh, me asking the question, probably a thing that would happen. But then the the that individual dies, or seems to die, and they actually replace the body with an incredibly well-made um, kind of uh, dummy. And it looks fantastic. I, I mean, it, from where we were looking at it through cameras, it was fairly obvious that it wasn't a, an actual person anymore. At least I found it that to be the case, because of looking at it um, and maybe it's the case of the fact that I have done various forms of first aid training my mother is a nurse and so all of this stuff gets brought up to me a lot and so when something does go wrong um, I'm reminded of a time when I was working someone basically had a fairly severe asthmatic attack and I was the one that dealt with it until the, the ambulance got there because no one else knew what the fuck to do and they were all panicking I don't tend to panic I tend to just do and so I did, and I helped that person, and they turned out to be okay out the other end, and it was all good. So, looking at that situation, though, this guy doesn't seem to have that level of um, uh, awareness. Uh, he's still being very compliant. He's had a very stressful evening already, and so this just makes it so much worse. And then it's, it's a case of he doesn't actually check the body himself. He doesn't take control of the situation because he's already subservient and he's already a lower status and he's he's being kind of used in a, an ancillary way, but he's allowing himself to be used in an ancillary way. And so, you know, it's it's again in this situation, you know what you should do. You've been told where it's from from when you were a kid that if someone hurt, if someone's hurt, if something bad happens, call an ambulance, get help. You know, leave them alone. Don't touch them. They, you know, touching them can make it worse. It's all that stuff around someone coming off their bike. You know, don't take off their helmet. Don't move them. Just leave them there and call for help. And this guy seems to have had a heart attack. And so, guess what? You're still not supposed to move them, and you're still not supposed to do anything else. You're supposed to seek help. There is help literally on the other side of these doors, and one person saying no shouldn't stop you, but it does. Why? Because he, this guy's already been primed, he's already had this reinforcement go through, and he's already um, in the position that they put him in. You know, he's already a very agreeable, compliant individual, seemingly, and now he's he's dealing with, with this otherwise. Now, the thing that stands out to me um, from a, a DISC profiling perspective as well is we have an area called compliance in DISC, and it's task-focused, but... Um, but introverted, but kind of passive. And in that case, I'm thinking, and I'm going, do you know what, though? If if these people were very, very high C, this would potentially be outside of their personal laws and, and rules that they've got for themselves that they comply to. In which case, again, you've got the, the, the task-focused end of things being the people that would probably turn around and say no because you've got the the compliant people going who, who are compliant by disc reckoning going we're not um this doesn't conform to our current rule set in which case we are not going to follow this process we are going to follow the process as laid out by our rule set 
And if you're a D type personality like myself, you're not very agreeable. You want the result. The result, this guy is full. Well, the, the, the situation, this guy is fallen over. The result, he needs help. Either because he's dead or because he needs help to recover. In which case, that becomes a situation of I'm going to go and seek help because that is the only course of action. It doesn't matter what exact course of action I take to seek help as long as the help the result that I'm looking for is achieved. So I would imagine that a lot of the people that they excluded from this experiment and everything else weren't kind of the, the task-focused individuals, and most, but most of them were the people-focused individuals because if you're an I-type personality, which at least one guy certainly was that they had on this, um, uh, not Chris, the guy that we followed through most of it, but one of the other chaps that, that ran they ran through the experiment at the end, that they show at the end, um, he seemed to be very much more i uh, type personality, much more uh, active personality, but people focused. Um, it's a it's a kind of situation of um, those individuals are still very easily influenced, and they influence others. In which case, they're going to go with a, a group because of the the people there are what they are there for. Same with the the um, supportive and stable uh, people focused equivalent in the the uh, the passive side of things. Um, you've got them uh, going along with the group because that provides stability, that provides them with the capacity to support others as is their want in some way or another. And so as a result, it's it's interesting to see that and how it all works out. But again, that level of awareness around the, the body itself and going and, and seeking help and knowing what you should do and all that kind of thing um, goes out the window. And again, if you're kept off balance, this guy was kept off balance throughout this entire thing. And they even moved from point A to point B when they moved this body. And then they can, and then even then, when it should have been a case of, right, well, now he's out of the way. We're in a stable in situation. There's stuff on the desks that we could use potentially to call for help or to gain access to things, to find a way around this. Um, and yet it doesn't come up because he's kept off balance. He's, he's got this authority figure in front of him who's a higher status than him, who's directly interacting with him, staying close to him, and making sure that he doesn't have time to consider those other options. Again, some of this stuff is stuff that we've talked about before, you know, uh, preventing other options from being viable, isolating you, locking things away from you, putting you on the spot, uh, keeping you off base so that they can they can throw in their own little bits and pieces to get you to go the way they want. Um, all of it stands out and all of it is highlighted in, in this show, which is another reason why it's a good idea to, to go and have a look at this because it highlights and, and demonstrates a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about. Then though, when later on, when they are fabricating this narrative of this individual falling down some stairs, it is suggested that the individuals kick the corpse and they say it's fine he's dead he doesn't know he's not aware kick him the the individual that we watch throughout the whole thing chris he draws the line and that's good you know he he has that limit and i feel like as a as a tech guy maybe he's on that border between um kind of being either supportive and like maybe on the border between uh, task based and 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 people focused so that uh, when he when it hits those those big red lines in his process he won't step over them um but again it's like the um the situation the awareness of it it, it shouldn't really matter by that point the plan keeps changing and there's no questioning of the plan um there's no awareness of the plan changing because that individual has been kept off kind of kilter the entire time and it all culminates at the end with this one individual Chris not pushing this individual off a roof when he wakes back up and he's not dead um, but here's the, the thing when it comes to those kind of situations they then show that there are three out of the four people that they did this so called experiment with that did push him off the roof all due to peer pressure, reinforcement, stuff like that. Simply put, question, be aware. You know, if someone, if, if everything is fine one minute and then it takes a weird shift, you know, it's it's a case of drawing the line, 
taking a step back, taking a breath, ignoring other people. You know, if they're looking to isolate you, bring you into their group so that they can force something on you, a decision, uh, an action, something like that, you they can't make you do anything unless you allow them to. Take a step back, take a deep breath, have a look at what's actually going on, and then choose. Don't follow their say-so unless it is the best course of action. And if it comes to killing someone, chances are that's not the best course of action anyway. So don't do that. That would be bad. But again, it's it's interesting. And it's something that, again, at the very end of the episode, after everything has been shown off, and all the or episode, after the end of the show, everything's been shown off, everything's been highlighted. Um, it's something, again, that Darren Brown goes over, something that I've said before, something that we we seem to definitely agree on, which is this is how people get into your head. This is how things get made a mess of, both in your life and in the world in general, because people can keep you off base. It can keep you off kilter. And there are so many people who aren't willing to ask questions, aren't willing to be aware of themselves and their environment and take on that responsibility for themselves. And so as a result, this is how everything goes wrong. But awareness, knowing is where the start is. Those four people that went through this so-called experiment, through this show, through this event, um, all had highlighted how their compliance could be hugely detrimental to them and those around them. And one would hope, as per their statements that they made at the very end of the show, um, that they have grown from it, learned from it, and they're going to change their behaviours to match up with more of the things that, that they can genuinely kind of focus on um, and not be be kind of steamrolled by other people's uh, thoughts, wants, ideas, blah, blah, blah. And again, this is where ideologies kick in. You know, the number of people that are willing to ignore solid news and not ask questions, not fact check in favour of something just making sense to them, it follows their internal logic and so they go with it. For instance, just this morning... Um, I heard someone talking about the, the case of an individual who broke into a mosque and left a, a side of bacon or something in the middle of the floor in there after vandalising the entire place. He's getting 15 years. He's uh, as part of a plea deal. Um, and most of those years are attributed more to the fact that he broke and entered with a machete and smashed a load of stuff. And it was a hate-motivated um, crime. Uh, rather than just, oh, he bought bacon. I heard someone summing it up as a guy drops a bacon sandwich in front of a mosque and he gets 15 years. Why? Because it added up for their internal logic. It added up for their internal sense of what's going on. They didn't question. They didn't fact check. They didn't make sure what was going on. They just said it because it made sense to them, right? And this is the problem. People aren't fact-checking things. They're not looking into information. And we've seen this in uh, like time and time again. Stuff that I've covered over and over and over when I was doing the, the month in review videos, when I've done commentary, when I've done uh, analysis and other bits and pieces. You've had people in the comments. You've had, I've had crappy emails. You've had all kinds of other stuff because it challenges their narrative. It challenges their idea because you've got this... this authority or this this thing that they have been manipulated by taken on and whether it's factual whether they're asking questions um you know it, it's it's a case of they've not asked beyond a certain point that they're willing to accept and that's where the problem is we should be asking all the way until everything is sound proven and solid not just until it makes sense to us there was a time when uh, a dung beetle pushing the sun across the sky added up to conventional logic and people didn't question it they went yes that is what happens that is exactly what happens there is this huge dung beetle that pushes the sun across the sky because that's the only thing that makes sense right that that has to be the only thing that it could possibly be and yeah that's what they went with because that was what made sense to them now a little bit more aware, a little bit more knowledgeable, we know that that's bollocks. But at the time, they had no clue. How did we know? How did we learn? How did we find out? How did we make sure that we didn't make the mistake of, of suggesting that anymore? Simple. We asked questions. We became more aware. And we didn't stop until we knew. Not, not that we thought we knew, 
although it made sense, that we actually knew in a testable and confirmable fashion. Anyway, guys, as said, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you've watched the show, uh, drop any thoughts that you have down below. Um, I know that the person that recommended this to me, uh, who, who uh, watches my videos, was absolutely terrified by how susceptible to suggestion people can be. So, uh, you know, the, again, this is why I've been doing these videos on manipulation stuff uh, anyway more recently. Um, but again, take a look at it. It's, it's a great piece of TV anyway, and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But otherwise, guys, I hope you found this, this kind of interesting. Um, I certainly did. And, uh, you know, if you want to want me to pick up on specific things like, um, as said, the, the kind of status or, or authority um, in manipulation and in this kind of thing as its own video, uh, please let me know so I can actually do that. Um, if you're interested in any of the other stuff, then again, please let me know. And uh, otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the video later. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, then please drop us a like, share this video, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the video later. Take care.